Real quick, I'm currently taking part in Bungie's annual charity event to raise money for kids and those in need. Click the link in the description to donate and receive exclusive rewards in game like this, 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 or this. We're currently in the top 15 in the world right now for money raised as a community, and if you'd like to take part in making a difference, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. With the release of the 30th anniversary event, we've gotten a slew of new weapons added to the sandbox inside Destiny 2. And in today's video, we're going to be looking specifically at the weapons added into the Dares of Eternity activity and going over every single weapon in the weapon set, how to get them, what their god rolls are, and finally ranking them best to worst. This part of the event is free to play for all players, so I wanted to prioritize the free to play stuff and we'll cover the dungeon weapons very soon in a future video. I spent a lot of time on this video to make sure that I could get you all the best information possible. We spent tons of hours over on the Twitch channel, link in the description, mindlessly grinding the ever-living hell out of Dares of Eternity and getting as many weapons as the game would let me get so I could try them out with a multitude of different roles to help you guys determine what the god rules are to go after. With that being said, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as I'd love to have you here on the channel and I have a ton more videos on the horizon. And without further ado, let's jump into this. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and go over how you're going to farm these weapons out to begin with, because what good is a god roll guide if you don't know how to get the weapons? There's a multitude of ways to obtain these guns, so here goes. The most used method of obtaining these weapons will of course be turning in treasure keys at the chest in Xur's hideout. You can get these keys by completing Dares of Eternity, completing lightning rounds in Dares of Eternity, which these are complete RNG bonus rounds after killing the final boss, as well as you can buy treasure keys for strange coins at Star Horse and you can even buy the Paraversal Hall packages, which can give you keys and weapons as well. You can also obtain these weapons on their own outside of treasure keys by claiming the engrams in Zura's inventory, or killing a rare treasure ogre that will occasionally spawn in the room before the main boss room. And if you do get it to spawn, it's a main mini boss for the encounter, so you can't miss it if you're lucky enough to get one, and I'll have footage in the background showing you exactly what this looks like. And upon killing it, it'll drop additional strange coins in either a new weapon or a treasure key. Now with all that being said, you guys know every method to get your hands on these new weapons. We're going to be listing them from best to worst in this video with timestamps so I don't waste your time. We're going to be going over the god rolls you should be looking out for and everything in between. So let's start things off with what I personally would say is the best weapon this update, and that's the Pardon Our Dust Kinetic Grenade Launcher. Now Pardon Our Dust is only one of two Kinetic Grenade Launchers in the game right now, and this one comes with perk rolls that I've been dying to see ever since I first fell in love with Truth Teller in Empty vessel. For those that might be a bit lost as to why I'm rating this weapon so high above the rest, special grenade launchers come with the magazine perk Blinding Nades, and this is the single most important and overpowered perk in the game for in-game content. I've been over this a million times before and even made a full video talking about Blinding Nades, so I'll save you guys the repeated dialogue and link the video in the description if it interests you. Now what I will say though is that unlike other Blinding Nade GLs, this is one of the few that's in the kinetic slot, with the other being ignition code from Season of the Splicer, but what makes Pardon Our Dust unique from the other is its ability to roll with auto-loading holster, and this single-handedly makes it better than Ignition Code, at least for me personally. Auto-loading was greatly missed on Ignition Code for me personally, as while I do enjoy Slide Shot, I'll take auto-loading holster any day of the week because of how my playstyle is. What I like to do in master content like Vault of Glass, Grasp of Avarice, or GMs for example, is use my Blinding Nade GL to blind anything in the room, and immediately immediately swap to my other weapons to go ahead and start mowing them down while they can't fire back. I'm able to go about this in a very fast manner with auto loading holster because I can fire my GL while in the air for example flying around and I don't have to wait for me to both hit the ground and do a slide before swapping weapons to ensure that my grenade launcher is ready to go whenever I swap back to it. Auto loading as a perk fits perfectly into my own playstyle way more than slide shot does so pardon our dust is miles better than its competition at least for me personally. With that said, the perks that you're looking for on this thing for in-game content is going to be blinding nades for your magazine, ambitious assassin or auto loading as your first main perk, and demo, vorpal, or even wellspring as your second main perk. For regular content where ads aren't as dangerous, you have way more flexibility with perks, you have things like spike nades for your magazine instead of blinding for extra damage, ambitious or auto loading for your first main perk, and literally anything in the second column as pretty much all of them are great in their own ways. Partner Dust is an absolute monster and I'm happy to have it in the game. 
With that said though, let's move on to our second best weapon for today's video because this one right here is probably going to get a lot more use from me because it's a primary. We have the Halo Battle Rifle, the BXR-55 Battler. Now as a massive Halo fanboy, I'm very excited to be talking about this weapon today, but I'm not going to let that cloud my overall review and impressions of it and give it a higher ranking than it deserves. The BXR is an absolute machine for both PvE and PvP, so I wholeheartedly think it belongs this high on the list. To go ahead and give you guys a brief synopsis on what makes this weapon so special, it's hands down the best solar pulse rifle that we have in the game right now. Stars and Shadow is not only a pain to farm, but it's one of the most sluggish weapons I've ever used in PvE, and Jurassic and Forge's Pledge are cool and all, but they don't have really great perk sets for late game PvE, and that's where the BXR comes into play. The BXR is a unique PR-55 legacy frame, which gives it increased accuracy, stability, and perfect targeting while hip firing. And when taking a look at the perks, we have a beautiful combination. In fact, we have multiple beautiful ones, but the main one that I'm interested in is Demolitionist in the first column and Kill Clip in the second. I can't explain to you how much I'm in love with this role as I have it myself, and I'm so excited to take this thing into GMs very soon and try it out some more. It's perfect for those stasis warlock builds or anything that you just need to have an extra grenade on with the added benefit of one single kill and reload netting you 33% extra damage for 5 seconds, which is just phenomenal. That's personally my recommendation for end game PvE, but for regular PvE we have Outlaw alongside Demo in the first column with Kill Clip and Adrenaline Junkie in the second, so definitely don't be afraid to be rocking that Demo Adrenaline role as well for casual content and Demo Kill Clip for end game content. It's really really good perk set and I'm very happy to see the perks on this thing overall. Now for PvP we actually have some new perks that might interest you. In the first column we of course have your usual outlaw, killing win, and snapshot but we also have perpetual motion and this is going to give you a flat bonus to stability, handling, and reload just by moving which I'm not sure if you noticed but you do a lot of that in the crucible and the reload speed which is what you would mainly want for PvE isn't exactly the best so normally I wouldn't really recommend this thing as a reload perk in PvE but for PvP it definitely helps and of course you do get the added benefits of stability and handling as well which you don't really need as much in pve as much as pvp now in the second slot we have eye of the storm kill clip elemental capacitor and rangefinder as well as a very very cool halo themed perk called blunt execution rounds which gives you extra damage on your next burst after a melee hit and for those that don't get the reference in halo when you'd melee an enemy and break their shields a single headshot with a precision weapon is going to take them out at that point and and with this perk, meleeing somebody and shooting them with one burst accomplishes the exact same thing. Really cool, kinda niche, but again, really cool. The BXR is a marvelous weapon for both PvE and PvP, and I cannot recommend it enough, so thank you to Bungie for making this an actual beast of a weapon so that we can enjoy it for many DLCs to come. Now next up from the BXR, we have our first ever legendary trace rifle, the Retraced Path, aka the Focus Rifle from Halo Reach. Stop calling it a Covenant Carbine! It's not a Covenant Carbine. Why do people keep calling it a Covenant Carbine? Yes, the Carbine is purple. Yes, the Retraced Path is purple. But let me tell you something. Th these are Halo-inspired weapons. It's not a Carbine. Looks nothing alike. It's a Focus Rifle. Okay, and if you say it's a Carbine in the comment section, I'm gonna kick your ass. Now, Retrace Path is a weapon that you should get simply because it's a one-of-a-kind thing inside Destiny, but what if I told you it also had a damage perk that increased its weapon damage by 50%? Well, taking a look at the perks, we have in the first column great picks like Shoot to Loot, Subsistence, and Feeding Frenzy, and in the second, we have the perfect perk for any ability build freaks out there, Golden Tricorn. Now, this perk is going to net you 15% extra damage on a kill, but after getting your first stack, when you kill an enemy with a Solar Subclass ability, basically one that matches this weapon's element, you'll get that damage increase to 50%, which is pretty bonkers. Now combining this perk with subsistence on this weapon is gonna be an absolute blast. We also have perks like One For All, Frenzy, and Demo to choose from if Golden Tricorn sounds a bit too niche for you. Retrace Path is a one-of-a-kind weapon as it's the only non-exotic trace rifle in the game and has a really cool perk set, so definitely don't sleep on it. Next up for the video, we have a weapon out of Bungie's previous game before Halo, Marathon, and that's the Wastelander M5 Lightweight Shotgun. Now, this shotgun is one of only two kinetic lightweight frames in the game, and unlike its competition, Reese Walker, this weapon can be farmed much easier. It also has some perks that are unique to it as well. This weapon is mainly going to be for PvP usage as you're looking for a role like Full Choke, Accurized, or Assault Mag with Perpetual Motion or Slide Shot in the first column and Opening in the second. 
for PvE though, we have Assault Mag, Lead from Gold, and 1-2 Punch, but for me personally, I'm still not completely sold on pellet shotguns and PvE, but I know some of you enjoy them, and perhaps you'll enjoy this one too, especially with the new pellet shotgun buff. Wastelander is only ranked this low on the list because I'm a PvE main, so PvP mains, don't beat me up in the comments for having it so low, I still prefer my beam gun that go burr. Moving on from Wastelander, we have the energy sword from Halo, or at least half of the energy sword from Halo, the Half-Truths Adaptive Frame. Basically, all I have to say about the sword is that you can use it to yeet yourself, and that's about it. It comes with a new perk called Eager Edge, which gives you more lunge, just like an energy sword, except in Destiny, you can yeet yourself across the map and sword skate with it. Pretty cool, and with a role like Jagged or Honed Edge, Swordmaster's Guard, Relentless Strikes, and Eager Edge, you're looking at the best possible role on this thing. Now, lastly for the video, we have a weapon that I still don't have unlocked after playing around 15 plus hours of this DLC thus far, and that's the other half Adaptive Frame Sword. It's basically the previous sword but with better perks, as you have Honed or Jagged, Master's Edge, Eager Edge in the third column this time, and Godlike perks across the board in the last column. Seriously, does anyone actually own this weapon? Because I still have yet to get it and I'm salty about it. I've opened over 50 chests and I'm still not having it. I'm featuring it below the other energy sword out of spite and I will not budge and put it higher. But with all that said though, that's gonna do it for today's video. I apologize for getting the God Roll Guide out a bit later than expected, but I wanted to ensure that I got you all the best possible information and didn't mislead anybody with any of my recommendations. I needed time to test the perks, get the weapons, everything in between, so I appreciate y'all watching even if I'm a bit late to the party here on YouTube. With all that said though, let's go to move on over to the comment of the day, and today's comment of the day comes from Zach, and he says, Chewy. Just wanted to say that I appreciate all the content creators like you and several others that put out these guides and videos as someone who just recently took the deep dive into Destiny 2 and bought all three expansions and has been grinding like crazy to finish the most important exotic quest to unlock all of stasis, get a max power, yada yada, before Witch Queen drops, everything you guys do is great. So thank you so much, Zach, for the support. And I've said this many times and I'll say it again, people like yourself are who I'm hoping to help out the most with my videos. My favorite aspect of Destiny is its in-game PvE content, and I strive to help as many Guardians reach that area as I can with the videos that I create. So thank you again for the support, man. And if you guys that are watching would like to be the next comment of the day, comment Juan down below for our homie Star Horse, and I'll pick you out for the next long style video that I do. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching up until this point. The algorithm, and I especially, greatly appreciate it. I'm about to get on the heavy daily upload train very soon, so I'll see you guys very soon in another video, or more importantly, I'll see you guys next time.